Learning objectives include how energy is derived from various nutrients and how ATP is generated. Few facts about the nutrients. Energy is associated with electrons that form bonds between their atoms. Nutrients are rich in hydrogen. As you can see, this is a glucose molecule, and it is rich in hydrogen. Hydrogen atoms move from various substrates, and energy is ultimately concentrated into bonds of ATP. Another fact uh, is oxidation reduction reactions. Oxidation basically is a removal of electrons from an atom, and reduction is a gain of electrons. And these two occur together, so they are always coupled. So there is a, a, some substance that would donate electrons, and there will be some other substance which would gain those electrons. So this is called a redox couple or redox reaction. So in this case here, a substance A is donating electron to this substance B. And then A becomes oxidized. When it loses its electron, it becomes oxidized. And the one that gains electron is called, it has been reduced. In many cellular oxidations, electrons and protons, they move together. And this is, in other words, is equivalent to removal of hydrogen atoms, as hydrogen has one electron and there is one proton. So most biological oxidations involve the loss of hydrogen atoms, and that is the reason they're also called as dehydrogenation reactions. There are other substances uh, uh, that are called coenzymes. They act as electron carriers. The electrons that are derived from various nutrients, they are captured by these coenzymes uh, temporarily, and then after receiving these electrons, they pass them on to other molecules, and during these electron passing from the nutrients to coenzymes and to other reactions, ATP is generated. And examples of these coenzymes include NAD plus NADP plus FMN and FAD. These are all coenzymes. Uh, they are present in the metabolic pathways. This is a redox pair and uh, how ATP is synthesized. This substance here is, is, could, is an, like here is an organic molecule, could be a glucose molecule, for example. Uh, it would donate, it is donating here uh, two pairs of uh, hydrogen, which is there's a proton, there is an electron so here. And this is a carrier, which is in this case is NAD plus a coenzyme, uh, it would receive these electrons and protons and then would be oxidized. It would, this substance would get oxidized and this would get reduced. In the second, next reaction, this is ADP, adenine, adenine diphosphate, and energy which is captured here in the form of those electrons would be used here to make this phosphorus attached to ADP, and ADP would get converted into ATP by utilizing energy from these electrons. There are three different ways by which ATP could be generated. One of them is called substrate level phosphorylation. So basically the addition of phosphorus to a chemical compound is called phosphorylation. And there are, as I mentioned, three ways. One of them is substrate level phosphorylation, where direct transfer of phosphorus uh, takes place to ADP molecule. Because this substance, is, as depicted here, is 1,3-diphosphoglyceric acid, it gets converted to another compound called 3-phosphoglyceric acid. And during this, these, this reaction, two ADP, the, there are two molecules starting with, two ADP are converted into two ATP. And because this is a substrate for an enzyme, and this is also the product of this reaction is also a substrate for another reaction that would take place, would continue. So this level is called substrate level phosphorylation. Uh, this is an example here that this substance that was phosphorylated here 
when this phosphorus from this uh, organic molecule got uh, passed on or bonded to ADP, this becomes without this uh, without the uh, the phosphorus, and this ADP was converted into ATP, and this is all happening at substrate level. It is called substrate level phosphorylation. There is a second way of phosphorylating compounds, and that is called oxidative phosphorylation, where electrons are transferred to NAD or FAD, and then these electrons pass through a series of electron carriers to ultimately oxygen. And electrons pass through a series of carriers uh, through a chain called electron transport chain. And ultimately, oxygen is the end carrier or receiver of these electrons. And as a result, there is ATP uh, generated by a process called chemiosmosis. So this is another view of this, the previous slide where you can see that electrons that are moving basically from the organic molecules like glucose, those electrons are transported uh, through different carriers in the cytoplasmic membrane of the bacteria. And ultimately, these electrons end up by uh, combining with the oxygen. So oxygen is the, the final receiver here in this case. And this water is generated. But during this process, there are lots of hydrogen ions are also generated. These hydrogen are, ions are, are used to make uh, ATP through a process called chemiosmosis. The third way of generating ATP is photophosphorylation, where the light uh, energy from light photons is captured by the chlorophyll, and then these excited electrons are used through a series of electron transport chain, ultimately resulting in ATP production. And this then ATP is used to make nutrients by different plants and by bacteria as well. So in summary, energy is associated with electrons in the food, and these electrons are extract, extracted uh, during metabolism in the metabolic pathways, and electrons basically derive ATP formation. And ATP is used for various activities in the organism.